Hey Jeff here, your YouTube reviewer of New England Brews, and welcome back. Well, it's getting to that time of year when a lot of the darker beers come out because the fall is halfway done and the winter is not that far away. And I'm uh, reviewing this in November, so winter is really only about a month or so away from now. So, um, you got starting to see some of those winter brews, the darker beers that come out in winter. And one of my favorites that comes out this time of year is the Narragansett Porter, uh, a brew that comes out in winter. And uh, Narragansett Porter, this uh, beer is the 16-ounce can, so even though I review New England beers, this particular can is brewed in upstate New York. However, the, uh, the beer is crafted at the Trinity Brew House in Providence, Rhode Island. I think it's also other parts of Rhode Island where it's crafted as well. Even though it's brewed for the cans in New York, it's still created here in New England. So um, that makes it a New England beer as far as I'm concerned. And Narragansett is synonymous with New England. The ABV on this is 7%. 7% ABV. The uh, Narragansett Brewery has been around, was around from 1890 till uh, the uh, late 1990s, early 2000s, and, and it went on hiatus for a while as they stopped brewing it. But then it was taken over again uh, during the uh, mid to late 2000s. And uh, since then, the, uh, the new owners have been really uh, taking Narragansett to heart and bringing back all those brews that made Narragansett famous. This particular one was first brewed in 1916. And as a matter of fact, the history of this porter is that uh, it was one of the few beers that during prohibition was still allowed to be uh, used for medicinal purposes. So I guess uh, the attitude was that if you drink a beer, it's good for the health, even during prohibition. So anyway, let's uh, get going on this right away. Hop off the can, getting a nice little head coming right out of the can, and giving it a pour. Now, I'm serving this at uh, probably upper 40 degree range, I'm saying, somewhere in that vicinity. So it's, it's kind of warm-ish. So that might be why I'm getting such a head. But anyway, I am getting a head, and I'm getting a nice dark brown pour. Um, you know, uh, yeah, mainly brown to almost black, um, which is what a porter should look like. Good significant head, but I think that's because I'm serving it at a warmer temperature. And, um, you know, I gave it a slightly aggressive pour. Give it a whiff. Mm. They brew this with five malts and a couple of hops, including Chinook and Simcoe. And um, I'm definitely getting a nice roasted, malted flavor on the nose. You know, kind of a, a, a good solid maltiness, but not the creamy maltiness or the yeasty maltiness that sometimes accompanies uh, well-malted beers. There's a slight hoppiness in the background there I'm getting as well. Not a huge amount, but I, I notice it enough to realize it's there. Let's give it a taste. Mm. The body is medium to full. That's a really nice body. I like bodies like this. Um, it's definitely not watered down by any uh, stretch of the imagination. It's got a good medium to full body feel to it. Now I really like this taste because it's mild and subtle but also you know full of a malt character and the hops are just there enough to kind of balance it out on the end. You get the good full malt flavor up front and then a, a bit of a hot bite, a, a, a kind of a, a low to moderate bitterness coming up on the back end. But it's definitely roasted, roasted all the way. You're getting a good roasted uh, maltiness, a roasted barley. Uh, you, you got a nice roasty flavor going on, and a roasty aroma on the nose. And I keep banging my O'Keefe sign. Sorry about that. I'm gonna stand a different angle today. Mm. 7% ABV, uh, I mean, that's, you know, it's, it's higher than your standard, uh, you know, over-the-counter beer that you buy at any convenience store, uh, you know, which those, you know, any kind of American pale and, and the standard beers that most people buy. Uh, craft beer lovers, though, 7% is just about right. You're not getting any kind of, uh, uh, you know, I'm not, at least I'm not getting a heavy-duty sort of uh, boozy or, or heavy alcohol flavor. 
you're, you're just getting the smooth malts, a, a, a nice uh, slight high pop bite at the end that just kind of lingers. Low to medium bitterness, I'd say, or low to moderate bitterness. Uh, just a really smooth porter. At the same time, uh, though, porter is uh, you're used to having kind of a coffee and maybe a, you know, almost a smoky flavor going on, and you're not getting quite as much of that in this beer. Uh, this this years ago was called Narragansett Dark, and this kind of reminds you of you know of a of a darker beer, the traditional dark beers before craft beer, you know, became the rave in the 80s, 90s, and 2000s. It kind of reminds you of the old dark beers you might have had in the 70s and 80s with a little more oomph to it. And I'm saying that in a positive way because there are a lot of craft beer fans that look back on dark beers of the 70s and 80s as like, uh, not so good. But I, I have to disagree. And it, you know, I always drank the dark beers when I was just sort of getting into the craft beers way back when, when I was still in my, uh, you know, 20s, uh, in the 80s and so on. And, uh, you know, so this kind of harkens back to that era for me in my mind. And that's kind of why I like this one a lot. So I'm really pleased that this is the first year it's been available in New Hampshire. In the past, I used to uh, buy it in Massachusetts and I think Rhode Island and Connecticut a bit. But uh, I believe this is the first year it's been available in New Hampshire. And, and I'm very pleased about that. So I'll make sure I'll pick up a, some more of this Narragansett Porter in the future. So that's it for today's review. Narragansett Porter. You know, a historical name, a name from the past, a name I love. Hi, neighbor, Narragansett Porter. Thanks for stopping by. I'll catch you again next time.